Inflammation of the prostate, so-called prostatitis, is a very common condition in men. In the first part of this mini-series, I explained acute bacterial prostatitis. Now let's have a look at chronic bacterial prostatitis. So much I can tell you up front. The transitions to chronic abacterial prostatitis can be variable in terms of symptoms, treatment modalities and prognosis. Likewise, chronic bacterial prostatitis is difficult to treat successfully. This video aims to explore the nature of chronic bacterial prostatitis, its associated symptoms and available treatment modalities. My name is Stefan Buntrock. I'm a board-certified urologist and sexologist. If you are new to your channel, please check out my other videos. By now, there are almost 400 uploads with interesting topics from the fields of urology and sexology. For never to miss out on new content, please subscribe. In contrast to acute bacterial prostatitis, chronic bacterial prostatitis is chronic, meaning that it lasts for at least three months. And in many patients, it can go on for years. In the year 1999, the National Institutes of Health came up with a classification system dividing prostatitis into four categories. Chronic bacterial prostatitis belongs to category two. The symptoms of chronic bacterial and chronic abacterial prostatitis are quite similar. We are talking about voidum problems with urgency and pain, pain in the prostatic region, perineal pain, pain in the scrotum and penis and even the inner parts of the legs. The main difference, however, is that germs are detected in chronic bacterial prostatitis. Since the prostate is a gland composed of millions of small glands, bacteria easily get trapped inside and may cause recurrent urinary tract infections and bouts of prostatitis. Means to detect bacteria are through midstream urine, voided urine after prostate massage to express prostatic fluid and a culture of the ejaculate. Additionally, so-called knots are used to detect sexually transmitted infections, which also can be the cause of prostatitis. Knot means nucleic acid amplification test. It is a method to detect genetic material of microbes such as chlamydia and so on. Once the pathogen has been identified, antibiotics are recommended as a first-line treatment by the guidelines. In most cases, you'll be prescribed a fluoroquinolone because it penetrates deeply into the tissues of the prostate and offers the best chance to clear the organ from the respective pathogen. However, this is extended therapy. Four to six weeks is the standard duration for antibiotic treatment and sometimes it may need to be extended to three months. Unfortunately, these drugs come with a risk for rather severe side effects. 20 years ago, they were prescribed a lot and frankly, besides diarrhea, I never noted any side effects. However, clinical data have revealed an elevated risk for ligament ruptures like the Achilles tendon, for example. But there is also a neuropathy, sleep disturbances, cognitive impairment, as well as visual, hearing and olfactory problems. I am prescribing these drugs if I must, because there are no alternatives, but it is not with glee that I hand over the prescription to the patient. As I said, sometimes sexually transmitted infections may be the cause as well. So for chlamydia, I use doxycycline, which is much nicer in terms of side effects. 30 to 60% of the patients with chronic bacterial prostatitis will do much better when treated with antibiotics. So what about prostate massage? It used to be the mainstay of treatment before effective antimicrobial agents were available. I mean, in theory, it makes kind of sense to empty the prostate gland from all the inflammatory secretions and bacteria. However, if it works, what exactly happens after prostate massage is not clear. The available scientific evidence is of very low quality too. As I said in the beginning, if antibiotics don't work, pain and misery persist, we are gradually heading towards chronic abacterial prostatitis and its treatment. These strategies may also be applied to chronic bacterial prostatitis and pelvic pain syndrome. In the next video, I am going to introduce you to the UPoint classification system 
and the numerous treatment approaches for chronic abacterial prostatitis. Personally for me, the question remains, is chronic abacterial prostatitis for real? Once again, subscribe to be notified when I address that question. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.